Next, we come to a strange thing that happened in September. Uh, a, a couple of headlines that caught my attention that seemingly come out of um, part of normal government behavior in the US, uh, but also... <laughs> or... <laughs> No, I mean, like, in so much as the context of the announcement, but also, obviously, as well, everything at the moment in the US. Oh, so it's just a thought of implying that anything about the current American government is normal. But anyway, that's... Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, but also, uh, this has to be seen as well in the context of the build-up to the election, which is now uh, less than 30 days away, um, in terms of voting, at least, if not the result. Uh, and this headline from, uh, this is CNN Business. But for people who don't like CNN, we do have other sources as well. We'll be linking to below and commenting on. Uh, this is a headline. Trump wants the ticket. <laughs> I think this is, this is in intolerable, as Indy's father would say. Um, Trump wants the TikTok deal to pour $5 billion into real history education. Uh, it's not that simple, they say. Um, another related article, which I think probably sets the, 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 the policy context in, 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 in its place, um, comes from Slate.com. Uh, Trump's vision for America, uh, American history, uh, education is a nightmare, but it's one historians know all too well. Um, <laughs> uh, historian teachers across the history teachers across the world and historians across the US um, were doing shots of whiskey, mixing stiff cocktails, and binge eating chocolate in the middle of the day on Thursday. This article begins with sounds, not sounds good to me. <laughs> not to celebrate any sudden interest in our of our fellow citizens in learning about the American past, but to fortify ourselves to watch the White House conference on American history. This event, held on September the seventeenth in the Great Hall of the National Archives building uh, and live streamed via the White House YouTube channel, was like all things Trump part of no, part infomercial part self-indulgent whining and part 1980s nostalgia mixed with 100% uh, anti-intellectualism. Blimey. Uh, the same president who made up a civil war battle in order to put a faux historical marker on his golf course, whose administration <laughs> meddles with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to alter or suppress information, and who still defines the truth of climate change, trotted out uh, a panel, no, so he still denies sorry, the truth of climate change, trotted out a panel of quasi-experts, along with two actual historians, and inexplicably Ben Carson, not quite sure who Ben Carson is, uh, to advance two ideas simultaneously. The panel argued that the case um, th th was that the American historians, um, besides those present, of course, um, on the panel, have abandoned the Enlightenment ideals of the Founding Fathers and instead uh, in, uh, want to engage in something other than free inquiry. At the same time, they propose that historians should stop examining the complexities of figures from the American past and instead offer our nation's children, or their nation's children, simple heroes that they could unreservedly admire. Uh, I would insert there, if you're from certain demographics, of course, uh, then you can unreservedly mm -hmm. admire. Uh, these two ideas are fundamentally incompatible, uh, a fact that didn't seem to bother the panellists. So on the one hand, what sounds like quite a good idea, uh, going back to, to free inquiry and the enlightenment ideals of, uh, of, 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 I guess, a good chunk of modern Western intellectual progress, um, but also as well saying, don't, but don't look at, don't look at the past too closely. Don't examine it. I mean, just, 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 just tell us the good bits and the bits that we can all just disagree with. And, uh, and that, that's, that should be your job, history teachers. And it seems that the, the, the president wants to funnel, or wanted at least, to funnel $5 billion from TikTok into, into real history education. What do you make of this? Because the response on social media was, uh, well, actually, <laughs> uh, the drinking cocktails, whiskey, and binge eating chocolate seems to sum it up quite well, actually. <laughs> People were less than impressed. Uh, people were less than impressed. No, I should just uh, say as well, our, our viewer who isn't sure, but Ben, ben Carson's qualification for uh, being involved in a discussion about history is that he's a Trump cabinet member, housing secretary, uh, a housing secretary, former presidential candidate, retired neurosurgeon. Um, oh, he's the pyramids uh, guy. Uh, 
Yeah, you've got it. In yes, mind. he's the guy who thinks that the pyramids were um, uh, grain stores for Joseph's. So built by Je- built by Joseph. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. right. That's Ben Carson, of course. Yeah. That that Ben Carson. That yes. Ben Carson. Ah, well, that, that the, 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 hence the whiskey, I guess. You know. <laughs> yes. So, um, no. I, where are we at? Person. Where are we at? <laughs> Look, so, this, this, sorry, this, sorry, just, yeah, it's just no. this is this is a crazy well, year, it really is. Go on, it's a crazy year. Um, President Trump, and um, through before him or, or his his media handlers or the people who do the thinking for him, uh, people like Steve Bannon, um, uh, uh, and um, uh, and 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 others, uh, when they, they've declared a culture war, um that they see any kind of questioning of their version of all of the traditional disciplines, whether it's medicine, economics, uh, geopolitics, whatever, as being an opposition, an opposition to the will of the people, an opposition to common sense, an opposition to uh, traditional American values, however they define it. Mm -hmm. Um, And so this is, is, is part of that because, you know, the, uh, again, part of the the narrative of populist politicians is never to admit you're wrong, mm. never to admit there's a potential fault, because that exposes a line of weakness that your opponents can exploit. Therefore, if you uh, say if if you once admit that your founding mythology is flawed and is just a mythology and not actually based on demonstrable historical evidence then you're immediately into an argument and you've lost control of the agenda mm. Mm. and so that's where this is coming up this is this this is about um establishing a um a folk tale version of history if you like and folk or, or, as in volk or uh, re-establishing the re-establishing Re-establishing, I don't know. I mean, yeah, whatever, however you want to define it. I mean, it, you know, we're we're into very very difficult. Uh, and and the thing is, you know, uh, we've spent a lot of time, I think, justifiably um, criticizing number forty-five, POTUS, because mm-hmm. um, uh, there's a lot to criticize. But this side of the Atlantic, just yesterday, Boris Johnson, UK Prime Minister, um, made a speech. Uh, online uh, to the virtual conservative conference and along with uh, really offensively dismissive uh, mentions of things like lefty human rights lawyers and other do-gooders as though lawyers trying to uphold the rule of law when the government behaves unlawfully Mm. is something to be attacked. He said, and 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 I'm quoting here, we are proud of this country's culture and history and traditions. They, they, and he was actually talking about the Labour Party in this context, completely unjustifiably, because the Labour Party has not made any comment, policy comment on this at all. They literally want to pull statues down to rewrite the history of our country, to edit our national CV, to make it look more politically correct. Now, this is done in the context of um, just a few days ago, the National Trust issued a report on the... um, influence and impact and evidence for slavery uh, and, and enslaved people um, in its portfolio of buildings mm-hmm. and, and, and land, land holdings. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was attacked from the right for, again, trying to, um, yeah, the, the, you know, br- uh, the, the British ended slavery. They didn't, you know, mm-hmm. um, the, 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 you know, um, the British ended slavery before everybody else. They didn't. Mm. Um, uh, 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 you know, it, it, it's seen. You know, it, it's seen as awkward. For example, that the working class areas of the North, the industrial Northeast, were using cotton grown by enslaved African Americans mm. um, in the 1860s. Mm-hmm. And in fact, Britain almost sided with the Confederate States in the American Civil War. That's not to be discussed, apparently. Well, uh, and, 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 it's not to be discussed without context. Well, and and also in that sense, um, presumably, uh, as uh, as a friend uh, said the other day to me, presumably, therefore, Britain 
and uh, in, instigated the transatlantic slave trade in order that it might have the kudos of shutting it down. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, that, that, you know, one-liners that crystallise the argument are really important, and that is a zinger. I love it. That. I'm going to use that. It I'm is. Going to use that. Um, well, and actually, it did. There's another, you know, again, in that sense, closer to home, tes.com, a teacher's website, Mm. um, uh, had a blog post uh, by Peter Mandler, not Mandelson, Mandler, uh, why Boris Johnson mustn't rewrite British history. See, ironically enough, it's not historians who are attempting to rewrite history. It, it's 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 the people no. who who try to say that doing it's, historians doing... rewrite history all the time. It's what we do. It's our job. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> and well, and also crucially, it's 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 attempting to deny history that is rewriting yeah. history. Um, yeah. Boris Johnson has claimed that Britain, for example, was the birthplace of democracy. It isn't says historian Peter Mantha, and he goes on to examine that claim. Yesterday, our prime minister was uh, talking, uh, invoking. Um, a vision of the future which is firmly rooted in a notion of the Second World War and uh, Britain's recovery from it. Um, and uh, and he used the phrase uh, building a new Jerusalem, which is, yeah. again, so it's rooted in, in history. And this is one of those, I, you know, I sort of shared that very deliberately yesterday with a, with a, um, with a uh, a chiral sentence, uh, you know, politics is history, history is politics, and it and it's just unavoidable. Uh, there there yeah. will be people I'm I no doubt who who haven't got this far in this segment already typing possibly. You know, Why are you talking about politics? Stop it! Ugh, you know, stay in your lanes. The fact of the matter is, our lanes. Woke. Well, no, no, yeah, I, I, do, I really hate that phrase. It's so it's just yeah. it's not it, it's not an insult to be um, no. to to. to, to, to to care about your fellow human beings but anyway um uh but the thing is not only is is our lane firmly in uh in the realm of humanity and when you when you're dealing with the history of peoples that's almost certainly one of the first things that politicians bring up in their great speeches will be our our history is a blah 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 you know it's it's there but also secondly in this instance this is this is politics absolutely bursting through the banks and coming firmly into our canal or onto our train track and attempting to 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 present something which is which is politically motivated. So, for example, uh, just going back to Washington, um, speaking before, this is from the Washington Post, speaking before the original copies of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, Trump said that teachers intent on focusing on slavery and racism in the American story and in our society are really trying to harm the country. And he denounced recent rallies against racial injustice as a direct result, he said, of, quote, left wing indoctrination in our schools. Uh, it wasn't that long ago that there was also talk about about the notion that, that universities uh, are full of left wing indoctrination as well. And mm. and I suppose and the broadcast media and uh, da, 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 yeah. you, name, you name it, it we're, we're being indoctrinated by them. apparently. Yeah. yeah. Now the thing is, yeah. I suppose I, I would end this 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 segment just by by saying my experience of of education and my experience of, of secondary edu- uh, secondary and then uh, higher education was a move a move away from textbooks. And a move yeah. towards giving you the tools to think for yourself. Far from Absolutely. being told what to think, my uh, my best teachers in high school, but also the the you know friends, sorry, teachers who became friends and colleagues in many cases, the best ones of those were people who didn't want uh, an acolyte. They didn't want a uh, a disciple. To, to mirror what yeah. they thought. They wanted someone who had the grounding to think about something for themselves. Uh, and hence, yeah. it's possible to become uh, a, a friend and colleague with someone who teaches you at university because actually you you become equals. You become able to have a conversation yeah. on in the, the, the open economy of ideas and to actually weigh and measure these ideas in an honest way. Now, at this point, it's worthwhile saying as well, I think, in this segment, that includes utterly distasteful ideas there is room there is room for someone to come in and suggest that uh you know uh national socialism um had a had a point and there was a, there, there were some good things that happened in nazi germany and so on and so forth there is room for that but it has to be examined 
and open to criticism. And more often than not, it will be therefore dismissed because actually the, uh, these ideas are often they, they often don't stand up to scrutiny. And this notion of, for example, presenting a, a national myth that services a very particular group of people doesn't stand up to scrutiny. That's not history. That is political. And it is, in fact, serving, uh, a, well, an agenda. I hate to use the words that people on the right often use. Not that I'm, I don't know, I'm not even sure where I, you know, I, I think I'm probably in the middle in terms yeah. of my, my, my particular, but I'm not, I'm not arguing from a far left perspective at all. Um, but in that yeah. sense, forcing agendas onto history is precisely the stuff of, uh, it's precisely the stuff that they accuse teachers of doing. And I find, I find it so interesting how it mirrors yeah. its projection. Look, let, in that sense. Yeah. Let, let, yeah. Look, let, let, let's, let's take, um, Maybe, maybe Claire, by taking this example as, as food for for thought about the 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 way things are going. I mean, at the moment, the, the British government, the UK government, some would argue the English nationalist government that is led by, nominally led by Boris Johnson, um, is arguing uh, implicitly, if not explicitly, always, but certainly implicitly, for a kind of British exceptionalism. It's trying to establish a historical narrative that is separate, that says that this, these islands um, that are currently a political, um, a, a, a political union of four separate states with a, an additional independent state, the Republic of Ireland, just off the coast, are somehow separate to Europe because of language and because of culture, mm. uh, and be, and because of history, mm. and, and and any historian who then starts to point out, well, actually. You know, the British Isles have been part of the experience of mainstream Europe since uh, 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 as, as far as we can tell, since the beginnings of people moving into these landscapes mm -hmm. um, and cultural movements do not recognize modern political borders and certainly linguistic groups and, 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 and so on do not recognize modern political borders, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. All, all, all the complexities that archaeologists and historians revel in unraveling um, can't be dealt with by that, that kind of political narrative no it, it because it undermines it therefore we're, we're immediately the cultural I won't say enemy opposition but just to bring it absolutely down uh, 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 up to date and to give you uh, uh, and it ties in with the the, the trumpian view of um, the thing, things like the 1619 project which we talked about in terms of American history in terms of putting uh, slavery and the enslavement of, of, of human beings at the heart of the American story because it's at the heart of the growth of America and the American economy. Mm. And incidentally, um, upon on which that video actually um, had a, a tremendously um, grim comment. There were a couple of comments that I actually had to delete for the for the tone of the conversation below. Um, one of which actually accused mm. the 1619 Project of being a terrorist organisation. Now, and the thing is, interestingly, in that video, I seem to recall, we were saying it was an interesting idea. We weren't saying this absolutely has to be now the way history is taught. And I think this this no. is part of the issue here, isn't it? Is this, the, the, there's a misunderstanding of what the, these conversations are like and what the tone of conversations that historians and archaeologists have is. Uh, uh, it's not absolutely. it's not absolutes in terms of this is history now. You know, it's more about, actually, that's an interesting idea. Maybe the, maybe a bit of that is a good idea, you know, sprinkling it um, on. I, 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 and the problem and the problem here is that the current government in the UK appears to be moving to the opposite of that position. Uh, the Culture Secretary, Oliver Dowden, recently sent a letter to museums that receive subsidy from Arts Council England mm. um, and, and the government centrally. The organisations like the British Museum in particular, uh, and so, but basically saying that the government's policy was not to take down or remove or move, for example, controversial statues, mm -hmm. but was to contextualise them. Mm. Uh, you know, so, you know, don't take down the statue of Cecil Rhodes, but put a little plaque at the bottom that people can read to say that he might have been not a very nice person mm. to black people. Mm. Um, removing from uh, and he removed from those organizations the right to make their own decisions by saying that uh, two things that any moves in that area uh, should be notified to the dcms his, his department i.e the government before they were taken or made public 
um, that they should follow the government policy and that um, this was particularly important at a time when the government was making decisions about its next funding round. Mm. Now, so we, went, we were talking about one-liners earlier. Um, now, Britain has the tradition of funding uh, on an arm's length principle. It, uh, even when it's government money involved, it's distributed by third parties like the Arts Council. And the way the money is spent um, within legal parameters is decided by curators, directors, boards of, dire boards of governors. This, is, this appears to be the government trying to take that right away from them. And as somebody put it on Twitter, what Dowden was effectively saying was he was being a cheap you know, pound shop mafiosa. He was saying, nice museum you've got there, shame if something happened to it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 